Yeah, so hello, I want to talk a bit about our integration of Collabora in eTrooper. So first a few sentences to what we have an offer. So it's, um, let's say, a smart online office with eGroupware. So we have intelligent linking of information. Everything is available in the browser. And with Collabora Online, yeah, it's an office pro product um, with nearly everything you want to do um, in an office. So eGroupware in general, we are located in Kaiserslautern, Germany. We are a service provider and software development company since 1996. And eGroupware is available on the cloud or on-premise since 2000. Um, we are a reseller of Collabora Online licenses. We have a SaaS hosting for Collabora Online, which can also be used from Nextcloud, OnCloud, um, Moodle, whatever. And um, Let me just oh, okay. so everyone can hear. Uh, yeah. Thanks. So um, these are more or less our collaboration applications we developed ourselves. So we have a mail client, we have contact calendar, we have file manager, we have a Kanban board included, which uh, works together with all applications. Um, we have task management and CRM view. We have project management, ticket system, we have working times or timesheets, what you can book on, tasks, calendar, contacts, projects, whatever you like. And we have a lot of integrations. So um, like Collabora Online, we included Rocket Chat. We have uh, telephony integration, not only with Placetel, but also with, let's say, an asterisk server. And other things, we have an API talking to Chitsi or Big Blue Button server, which integrates nicely with Calendar. We implemented um, using OpenID Connect that you could um, have remote desktop from Apache Guacamole. So you have your, 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 your business um, PC running in your office and have it remotely accessible from eGroupware with multi-factor authentication. So you can work on your desktop PC even from at home and other RPs, and we are, let's say, using REST RPs and protocols like CALDAF, CARDAF, WebDAF for accessing the data. So integration of Collabora Online is standard for any application or any um, installation you do, no matter if it's online or um, on-premise. And we have just simple site configuration where you configure your Collabora server and we're doing a few checks for on-premise. You can also insert there directly in your license key and it gets restarting the cool server to get it into so an admin doesn't need to change the cool 3D XML file itself. It gets automatically into. Um, yeah, so we have a few of preferences for the users like um, what toolbar, do you want to use a toolbar or the other one? Um, what should happen with documents? Should it be downloaded or opened online? And as we're working a lot with templates and placeholders, some things which goes also into that direction. So how does it look with the integration? So we have a few elements we do automatically. So like, um, having some icons from our side inserted to send that document as email, which then opens with the mail application, attach it or have it with a sharing link to open in Collabora online again. Um, we have dialogues for save as, which also allows to directly save it with a different format into our file manager, also in a different location. No matter, and other things I'll show later on. So eGroupware in general acts as a file server and we have a system where we have, um, we can mount all kinds of things into eGroupware. So also including SMB mounts or WebDAV. Um, we have versioning file system which you could enable for different folders. 
and so on. So, for example, you could also mount, if someone is using Nextcloud and eGroupware, you could also mount your Nextcloud, if we're talking about the same user base, um, into eGroupware and so have both available. Um, yeah, so one thing what we call the power of eGroupware is any data you store in our database can be used in Office documents. And it can also be used in mails, but because of that placeholder system, it can be used with any file where we allow that kind of merge printing. And what we're doing is we're merging the data within the placeholder, and the placeholder shows this is where the data should be shown afterwards. And we can directly insert contact data within the Office document itself. So how does it work? So um, these are now different screenshots merged together to show where it works. So in general, it works in any list we have. So you have contact details, you mark your contact, say I want to insert it into document, you select the file type and the document and it gets merged into. Or you are in your Kanban board where you have some kind of workflows also running and you use again here it's a, from a contact insert into document and it gets there or you are in a CRM view showing contact details and tasks and again move merge the data into your document and um, this works also with let's say documents itself so you can store let's say you font your logo in a default document and store it into templates collabora folder. Then the document will be used for opening new documents. So just by default, by um, inserting or integrating your fonts and logo, it will be used for any new document, what you create. And with the conversion API, you can even merge a document with a placeholder and directly create the PDF. So I select my spreadsheet, create it as PDF, and it gets directly created into a PDF format with whatever formatting and data. So for example, here you have the contact information which was merged into the document and it gets out as a PDF. And for sure, this then can be used um, to email it directly to the customer and things like that. And this is the first time you also see some specific placeholders for us. So this is um, something where you could insert contact details into your office document or insert placeholders fetching from our um, system. So same is for sure, you can just use a convert to. Um, so without opening that document, I'm creating a PDF and mailing it somewhere. So it doesn't need to be opened. It gets directly stored on the server and can be sent out. So now looking into how does it work with those placeholder things. So I'm clicking on my insert contact details and I'm selecting, I want to have a business address and I'm selecting the entry. So I'm here just searching for the name of a contact I have in my database and it shows it as a preview and then I'm going to insert it and it gets inserted into the document. Or for sure, same works with now I'm inserting name, email, phone and it gets there, but I can also use any placeholder I like to have and use it in the system. And I can always either insert the placeholder to create a template document or insert the data directly. So these are some examples of placeholders. So it's really any data we have can be used. It doesn't matter if it's anything from the contacts or we have these things of creating custom fields so whatever a customer needs, we can just create it as a text field, as a select box, as linking to something else. 
Um, but we also have some general fields like you want to create some um, if statement, if this is that, do this and insert that, and in the other case, insert that. So there is a yeah some logic behind, and you can create your documents as you like. And let's say in general, as more you're using data in documents, as more effort you may put into creating the templates because it will save you afterwards a lot of time because it simply merges the data, you send it out and you get a workflow for saving times. So this is an example now from project manager. I have some project details I need to send out more often. So for example, I want to have the location of the um, where this happens, I'm just creating or using placeholders. So this is a custom field which says link it to my contact. So this is getting the organization name of the contact I selected in my project or list me all my attachments which are attached to the project. And then it inserts the data on that side and you can use it in the documents. Same as well for emails. Or same for spreadsheets, you define your templates and there is a page repeat tag, which just means the whole row gets repeated with the data. So if I select two or three projects, it gets into different rows in the spreadsheet afterwards. Another example, so like creating a service offer. So it's pretty simple. We have simple products. So we have some, um, use it in the spreadsheet, adding the name of the customer and the organization, and it gets merged into, and you have the name in here. You change the numbers of the user, save it as PDF, mail it to the customer. And another example, so what we called infolog, which is just really much more than just tasks, because you can create your own infolog types, you can create your custom fields. So this is an example of creating invoices in our own application. So whatever you need, you create as custom fields. So some here are date fields, others are just text fields or um, numbers, or you have um, a select box with different values. All these is now in my system and I create out of it, I have the template created with the placeholders and then it gets merged into, again, saved as PDF, sent out to the customer. And for sure, if, in, if I'm doing such kind of things, I also want to have some reporting. So reporting would mean I created a template, I select my hundreds, thousands, whatever of um, infologs of that type, and it gets merged into my document and I have some nice um, reporting, summarizing of um, how much is already paid or not. Uh, for sure, if you're talking about bigger organizations, you probably have that in SIP or something else. Um, but it's just a simple example. If you have a small company and want to do these kind of things, that's easily available with eGrouper. That's another example, just showing now to use it in a mail. Same system, you have the placeholders, you can use it either in the to field or somewhere in your document and we are merging the data into the document if it's filled. So that's more or less. Thanks for your interest. And